How you doing? I hope you're well. All right, we're gonna get started on tonight's topic. Now, listen, you gotta engage with me. You gotta interact with me. If I say something you like, give me a whole bunch of fire emojis. So let's try now. Insert something fire here. Put a whole bunch of fire emojis. If I say something that connects with you, um, put the hand raise emojis up. We're gonna talk about it. And listen, share this with anybody that you know that might be dealing with any father issues, mother issues, any parental issues, because we're gonna shed some light on this tonight. I wanna see you get free. I wanna see you get hold. We're gonna tackle this thing head on. All right, so I just wanna make sure. And also, I wanna thank each and every one of you for coming on. You know, some of the topics that we talk about, they are super tight. They're super awkward, you know, they're in your face and they really cause people to reflect and cause people to think. So I want to applaud you for enduring all of these lives that we talk about, for, for really committing yourself to wanting to break free. I do want to say that and thank you for all the love, thank you for all the support and thank you for all the care. Now, I want to jump into it. The point of this live, we're going to be dealing with things tonight. I want to expose this spirit and I want to expose it to see how the orphan spirit has manifested itself in your life in your relationships and I also want to expose how it's manifested yourself in, um, in in the way that you see the father you see because the orphan spirit what it does it comes to affect the way that you see God so although it manifests itself in your relationships it actually it, it's, its entire aim is to keep you out of your sonship or your daughtership in God so we're gonna get there tonight okay all right so let's pray father I thank you tonight that as we're about to start tonight's live that you are here with us Lord I bind the spirit of offense and even the spirit of ignorance. I take authority of it and I capture it now and I burn it by fire. Lord, I'm asking you that as we're about to delve into tonight's topic, let the angels and let the hosts of heaven stand at attention with us. Father, I pray that your angels will stand on guard and that you would minister healing to us. Let us not be offended. Let us not be uptight. But Lord, I'm asking that you would allow us to desire for healing because your desire, your word says actually that you are a father to the fatherless and you're a mother to the motherless. So as a result, we thank you that you are the ultimate father and as we unpack these issues we say get the praise get the honor get the glory in jesus name we pray amen now i want you to brace yourself we're going to talk about some things tonight you might get uncomfortable it might trigger some emotions it might trigger some responses from you i want to say that what we're coming we're shedding light on this demon power and how it has affected you and i'm going to empower you and equip you with the tools to overcome it so i would tell you get a notebook Get a pen, get a paper, get comfortable, get a drink of water, put in your headphones, close the door, get in a really frame of mind because we're going to unpack this and we're going to talk about the orphan spirit. Now, the, an orphan, anybody knows about orphans and orphanages, um, the Google defines an orphan as a child whose parents are dead. So an, Google defines an orphan as a parent whose child, uh, a child rather, whose parents are dead. Wikipedia defines an orphan as a person whose parents are dead, they're unknown, or they have permanently abandoned them. Oh God, this is getting so good. Again, Wikipedia defines an orphan as a person whose parents are either dead, they're unknown, or they, they permanently abandoned them. And then lastly, the definition of an orphan in the Greek is a, is a, a person who's fatherless or parentless. Okay, so this is important as we're setting up our foundation. Orphans are typically people who don't know who their parents are. So they're either born and either they're either given away or maybe they, maybe like, you know, the circumstances happened and they were unable to provide for that child so they had to put them up. And so the process of one becoming an orphan, this means that you're now up for adoption. All right. Now, if you're a Bible scholar, you would hear, okay, adoption, that's something that is in our lineage as Christians. And so an adoption or, or adoption means, Google defines adoption as to legally take another child and to bring it up as one's his own. Google defines adoption as the act of legally taking on another child and bringing it up as your own. And then the Greek defines um adoption as the placing of a son so orphans are people who don't know who their parents are they've either been neglected they've been abandoned and also they've been per they, so they've been permanently abandoned that that's a willful renunciation of their existence and so there's many people who actually experience 
physical um, abandon or physical um, um, orphanhood. So their parents, you know, they give them up and they say, you know, we're just not able, you know, maybe it was an accident, you know, things happen. And so what this does, so what, what the, the orphan spirit does now, it targets the vulnerable and it targets people who either have um, tarnished childhoods, um, people who were physically abandoned. It, it, it combats them, it comes into them, it targets them, and then it tries to control their life and manifest itself in different ways, which I will explain in a little while. Now, I want to make it crystal clear. Now, there are two types of orphans, okay? There's two types of orphans. The first set of orphans, like people who are orphans, are people who willfully, or parents who willfully neglect their, their children. So this is where the child, now it's not their fault. It's nothing that they did. The parents or the parent just said, we can't do it, we have to give them up. That's one type of orphan. The other orphan is the willful act of, renounce, of renouncing their parents, See, because oftentimes we think about orphans. Like you can be a willful, a willful, a willful orphan in the natural. So if you decide that you say, you know what, it's just not working out with my parents. It's just not working out. I'm gonna do things on my own. You're also considered an orphan, even though they didn't abandon you. You abandoned them. All right. So this is all gonna make sense. I'm just laying some foundation. I'm laying some foundation now. We're talking about orphans. We're going to get to the spiritual. We're going to get it all deep in a minute. But you see, it's, imper it's imperative now that we talk about uh, children and babies. When you're born, um, it's scientific scientifically proven that if a baby does not receive skin-to-skin -skin contact, or if, they, if they're not given love and affection, that baby will die. It will die. If the moment that the baby comes out, what do the nurses do? They throw it on the mom. Because there's a skin-to-skin -skin contact. In other words, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's actually a biological need of the child. Babies, they need love in order to survive. So therefore, if you are not receiving the adequate love that you need, what's happening is, what will happen is that that orphan spirit will target you. And then so you start to feel rejected. You start to feel abandoned. And that's why many believers and many Christians now, or even just many people overall, what they think is, they say that, you know what? I'm like, there's something in my life that I'm missing and I can't seem to put my finger on it. And they know that has something to do with love. But why? The orphan spirit, it targets those who've been deprived of their emotional needs when a baby and also when they're um, in their adolescence and as they go through life uh, oh that is so good that's so good that's so good the orphan spirit targets people it targets people who are deprived of emotional of their emotional needs now if any of you guys study psychology or you went through school you know that there's there, Maslow's hierarchy our needs first we need our physiological needs you know then we need our I don't really remember what it is like I think like basically if you need food air water all that then you need you know resources economic then you need emotional then you have like the different tiers it, it, your, your emotional development is very important when you're a child and so the orphan spirit what it does is it enters people when they're young see demons are smart demons don't wait until you're 32 years old until you're 40 they get you when you're young they get you when you're two when you're three they get you when you're five and they, they begin to study your life they study your patterns and then what it does it influences the way that you think and so this is why now when you're an orphan you're actually neglected of your emotional needs because your foster parents depending on how emotionally intelligent they are they might deprive that child of their emotional needs so they won't receive praises you know they won't they won't praise the child they won't hug the child they won't kiss the child you know they won't tell the child that they love them praise them for their accomplishments all these things are needed in the in the in the in the adolescence of when children are raised and so the orphan spirit now what it does when you're deprived of your emotional needs what happens is the orphan spirit then goes about trying to make up for lost time for what you needed but you see it's not the job of the child to go about and and to look for what they need the child all they have to do is be there be loving you know you're a kid you just want to blow bubbles you just want to be happy so your emotional needs and and if you are deprived of emotional needs the orphan spirit takes advantage of that and what he, he tries to persuade the people of God to think in a certain way. So if you don't have parents, and that's the thing, I want to debunk something. Many people think that because I have both my parents in my life, that I'm not susceptible to getting um, the orphan spirit. But that's false. And you see, like, I come from an HR background. So we, they, they teach us about absenteeism and presenteeism. And I think the same is true in psychology. Absenteeism in the HR world means when you're at, it means that you're you're missing a lot of days at work. You're not showing up. So this physically means that you're not going into the building. Presenteeism in an HR context means that you're showing up, but your mind is somewhere else. Oh, all right, all right. 
as long as I listen. Whenever your presenteeism, presenteeism in the HR world means you show up to work, but your mind is elsewhere. So how many parents now um, raise their children and although they might not be absent, you might have two parents in the home. How many parents are there, but they're otherwise minded? See, the orphan spirit looks at that. It says, okay, sure, you have both your mom and your dad. But what if your mom is not emotionally inclined and emotionally aware to your emotional needs? So although her, her body's there emotionally, she's not there for you. So the orphan spirit now enters a person like that. And because this is what you needed all along. And this is the thing that I have and the issue that I have with millennials, especially millennials. We are, um, we go through, we've been through so much trauma, so much pain. We've been deprived of so much, you know, depend, like there's a lot of people that come from broken families and broken homes and so it's it's not intentional on your parents part however what happens is things sometimes get overlooked you know if you if you live with one parent in the house they may have to get two jobs to provide for you and your other three siblings and so they're not able to help you with your homework they're not able to be there with you when you by the time you get home from school so all that's happening is you just feel like nobody loves you nobody cares for you and they do however they're trying to make sure that that you're that you're fed they're trying to make sure that you're eating trying to make sure that clothes is on your back and so your emotional needs are are left uncatered to all right so i want to debunk that myth you do not have to, the orphan spirit just doesn't just doesn't come into people that are actually been physically given to adoption you can have both parents in your life and still battle with the orphan spirit also you can be a full-blown christian believer and still be um and still be um tormented by the orphan spirit and it, it, it actually really shows because you know many times look at the way how you approach the father and the, okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But look at the way that we approach the Father. You can be a Christian, and you can still have um, distorted beliefs of your sonship and daughtership in God. All right. And the other myth that I want to do is that preachers and anointed people, people in the pulpit, they're also not exempt. They can be um, filled with the with the orphan spirit. So now I want to discuss what the roles of parenting are, or what parents are. Okay. Your parents. The job of your parents is to nurture you, to love you. To affirm you, to correct you, to teach you, to guide you, to cast identity upon you. And that's why many people who lack a father figure in their life, typically they lack identity. Because we know that scripturally it was the men that named their child. And so your name has extreme significance because in Bible days, whatever they named you was going to be the will for your life. And so when you have, you know, if you're growing up and you don't really have a dad in your life, sometimes if, if anybody else doesn't fill that place or fill that role, maybe, you know, you kind of go through life without, you know, knowing who you are, really knowing your identity, or you kind of second guess yourself. Yeah, like, I know I'm nice and I know people love me, but what's really going on? Like, you kind of have a hard time grasping it. Because if you're missing emotional needs in your childhood, the orphan spirit targets you. And then so it begins to torment you. And so what you do now is you begin to look for protection in another place. You begin to look for nurture in another place. You begin to look for, for, for affirmation in another place. When really the design of the will of God was that you would receive all that you need in the home. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So... This is the role of parents. So we talked about orphans, we talked about adoption, and now we talked about parents. So now I want to talk about how does the spirit enter people. This spirit enters people through a baby. It, come, it can come as a baby. So many times if you have an unplanned pregnancy, sometimes the dad or the mom might say, oh, well, the mom wouldn't say, but the dad would say, it's not my child. No, nope. before the child was even conceived, before the child was even born, a spirit of rejection and abandon comes upon it. And so now that baby has to, from the from before it even came out nine months or whether it was premature or whatever the case might be, it already has a spirit of abandon upon it. It already knows. And the thing, the spirit of the child is aware. And so it's saying, oh my God, you know, it doesn't love me. They don't love me. What's going on? And then when that child is conceived, it already has a track record of being abandoned or already has a track record of orphan tendencies based on what was said before it came out of the womb. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. How does the orphan spirit enter people? Through abandon within adolescence. So maybe, you know, if your parents went through a divorce, you know, very early in your adolescence, one, two, three, four, five, you know, and when you're young, you, you can't really tell a child, hey, mommy walked out. Hey, daddy walked out. You just have to say, oh, you know, they'll be back or, you know, they're doing, and we kind of have to make all these lies. And so what happens now is when that child now goes to school and they see, you know, their, that, that person's father picking them up from the, um, from, from school and from daycare, they're going home saying, where's my daddy? And then 
as they grow up, they're saying, why doesn't my father want me? Why doesn't my mother want me? What did I do wrong? Why did they abandon me? Why are they so mean to me? And what happens is the orphan spirit begins to tell you, you're not good enough. It's your fault why they're not there. If you, if you didn't say this, if you didn't do this, if you didn't come, you would have had this in your life. And the orphan spirit begins to lie to its victims. And it makes the victims feel like it's their fault when really it's what it's all that its number one mandate to do is to cause you to, to be blinded of your kingdom identity in God as a son or as a daughter. How does the orphan spirit enter people? It enters people through single parents. So you can be, whether you're a single dad, that child could be susceptible to the orphan spirit. Whether you're a single mom, that child could be susceptible to the orphan spirit. It also enters into victims' lives through godly roles who intentionally or unintentionally abandon them. So oftentimes you might have ministry gifts or you might have people who are in ministry. And whether it's, it's intentional or not, you can receive an orphan spirit if you feel like you're being neglected by even your spiritual covering. See, that's the thing. We think that it's just limited to natural birth and natural parenting. But in all reality, the orphan spirit can even overtake people in ministry. Because they think that, oh, why doesn't nobody want to cover me? Why don't I have a spiritual mother? Why don't I have a spiritual father? Why doesn't anybody look at me? And so what happens is we go about in life and even in ministry, trying to seek the affirmation of, of well-known people, trying to seek the affirmation of leaders so that we can finally be claimed as a spiritual son or a spiritual daughter. And also, the orphan spirit, it enters people through rejection or perceived rejection. It enters people through rejection or perceived rejection. So you may not even be rejected. If you have an idea or thought, the orphan spirit would will, will say, oh, that's, that's my doorway. Offense is the doorway to the orphan spirit. And so it, something may not even be really what it is. But the way how we see it and how we misconstrue it, the orphan spirit wants to come and lie to you and tell you that, hey, you're a bastard. You don't know who your parents are. You don't know who your lineage are. So that's some ways how the orphan spirit can enter you. Now, I want to give you some characteristics of the orphan spirit. Now, when the orphan spirit enters a life, what it does, it begins to teach you how to think. It lies, it tells you, it tells you lies in your ears, and it trains your senses on how to think. So people who are, who are possessed or who are, who are being um, you know, tormented by the orphan spirit, they lack trust in people. They have a lack of trust in people. Why? Because it's very nostalgic for them. What they're used to is abandoned. So anytime somebody comes in their life, they don't give them the time of day. They say, okay, let's see how long you last. Because my mother walked out on me when I was six. And my dad walked out, walked out on me when I was 12. So I'm not even going to put my trust in them. If I couldn't trust them, what makes me think that I'm going to be able to trust you? The orphan spirit has a fear of abandonment. So it enters all of its relationships and it views it in fear that it's going to be abandoned. Why? Because that's also nostalgia. They think that, you know, sure you're around now, but maybe in the next week you may not be there. Or the, they, they, the orphan spirit teaches people to, to brace themselves for a dramatic exit. It teaches people to brace themselves, you know, for short-lived um, opportunities and short-lived um, relationships. When really, like, relationships should be the basis on covenant. The orphan spirit also expects to be abandoned. So not only does it not trust and it fears it, it actually expects it. And so sometimes they'll even say certain things like, oh, you know, yeah, we're cool for now, but we'll see what really happens later. The orphan spirit, it doesn't value or trust leadership or accountability. It doesn't value and it doesn't trust leadership or accountability. Why? Because leadership or accountability is a picture of a parental relationship. It's a picture of an authority. And now we know that when, depending on where you live in your state, your province, your country, over here, 18 is the legal age. When you're 18, you're considered a grown adult. Therefore, until you're 18, you're placed under the, the tutelage and you're placed under the supervision of a guardian or your parents. And so the orphan spirit, it doesn't trust anybody in leadership. It doesn't trust in anybody of, of any kind of accountability because it says that, you know what, like it, it, it has a lens and a perspective that everything and everyone is not going to last. People cannot be trusted. Things are going crazy. Prophet Steve, God bless you. So that's also another. Another characteristic of the orphan spirit is that they mask their vulnerability in fear. So it masks its vulnerability and fear. So the fact that it's fearful about abandon, what it's doing, it, it doesn't want to put in itself, itself in a position to become um, vulnerable. Now, women who have...
have the orphan spirit, sometimes they have a hard time trusting male figures. And it all depends on if on, on if you know if you have a if you're lacking a father figure. Sometimes they don't trust male figures. They feel like you know men are all men are dogs. You know, they feel like, oh, nobody sticks around. These men ain't loyal. You know, Drake has a saying, these blanks aren't loyal. Like, you know, it, what that that what that is, that's a spirit of it's a spirit of 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 a fear really they're af they're afraid of being abandoned so they won't even put themselves in the position to be abandoned the orphan spirit works two and three steps ahead of you and says you know what I'm so afraid of heartbreak that I'm not even gonna try. I'm so afraid, like, I'm so used to every man co what coming in my life, he comes in and in the next three months he wants nothing to, to do with me. So therefore, I'm just not gonna try. All men are dogs, all men are crazy. The orphan spirit also dis has a distorted view of love, affection, and platonic relationships. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about this in, in detail. Now, let's talk about going back to the childhood or, or, or the emotional needs of a child. Every child, I just said, the, every baby when it's born, it physically needs love. It physically needs attention. It physically needs skin-to-skin -skin contact. If you watch any normal child, children love affection. They love cuddles. They love hugs. They love kisses. They love to be in your spot. You know, the whole couch can be free, but they want to squeeze up right beside you. Why? Because an emotional need of a child is that they actually need love and affection in order to, to grow up. Another study said that if you don't give child children affection, they actually physically won't grow. Like physically, like in height, in stature, in health, they actually won't grow. So this shows me now that the orphan spirit, when you're not used to getting love, attention, affirmation, praises, um, when you're not used to getting cuddles and hugs and kisses in a platonic sense, what the orphan spirit does, it distorts your view of love and it makes you now identify with the only sense of love that you can identify with, which is romance and sexuality. Here's why. Because if you were deprived of hugs and kisses and cuddles that were innocent and were pure and that were needed, and when you become age, I don't know, now it's earlier, but back in the day when you used to become maybe 12, 13, 14, you can, you're really maturing into a young woman or a young man, you start to have sexual feelings and desires. And so if you were deprived of love and affection, you, you missed out on healthy love. So now that you're experiencing all these sexual feelings and you know your, 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 your hormones are raging as a young man or woman, you think now that because you were deprived of that, this is the only love that I can relate to. And so the orphan spirit teaches people that platonic love is weird. The orphan spirit teaches people that, that platonic affection is weird when in reality, every baby, every person that was born had it or got it at one point. You need physical affection in order to grow as a child. So the orphan spirit, it, 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 it has a distorted view on sex, a, dist a distorted view on love, a distorted view on affection. And so when, it, when it's given to them, they're not used to it. Or what usually happens is if somebody wants to give you a hug, the orphan spirit, what the orphan spirit interprets this as, they want to sleep with me. Maybe we're going to get married. You know, the orphan spirit will, it, 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 it over-sexualizes anything that has to do with love and romance. And so because that void has been in your heart and you've been wanting this all your life, you don't know that you want it. The orphan spirit knows it. But if you don't identify these voids, what happens is the, 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 this, this orphan spirit will, will manipulate you into thinking that all love and attention is sexual. When it's not, the relationship that you have with your parents is not sexual. The relationship that you have with your siblings is not sexual. Or at least it shouldn't be. We know incest happens and things happen. However, the norm is, it is that these are platonic relationships. A kiss... A mom kissing her baby girl is not sexual. A dad kissing her baby girl is not sexual. And because we live in such a fatherless generation, we have people who think that bros who tell each other that they, lo that they love each other is considered homosexual. We think that two women who are best friends that love each other, if they hug each other, we think that's homosexual. And it's really not. What it is, is it's a doctrine of demons that actually teaches the people of God that platonic love is dysfunctional when it's not. The fact that you cannot receive platonic love is dysfunctional. That's why even Paul was saying in the last days, you're going to be without natural affection. If you, if you read that word natural affection in the Greek, it means that you can't relate to kindred or people in your family. And so don't allow people who, whose, whose ways of thinking are perverted to stop you from getting the godly love and affection that you need from, from your peers and from people that are outside of romance. So I want to make that clear. One of the crystal, one of the characteristics of the orphan spirit is that they have a distorted view of love, affection, and romance. 
also the orphan spirit it idolizes romance just like the rejection spirit it idolizes romance why because the love that it wanted and that it needed as a child it didn't get it so now you're too old for cuddles with dad now you're too old for cuddles with mom so now what you do is you now impose those demands and you do, you impose those requests on your significant other you say, if I could just be married, all my problems will go away. If I could just get a girlfriend, I'd finally feel loved and accepted. But you'll never feel loved and accepted until you accept your identity in Jesus Christ, number one. And until you actually come in contact and know that I am somebody's child. That, you know, my parents love me. And although I didn't have both of them in my life, maybe God sent somebody else. God sent another mother figure in my life. God sent another father figure in my life. And so you're never going to find love and romance in, in, in your significant other. The orphan spirit will persuade you. Get in a relationship relationship because you can make up for lost time but it's not your husband's job to be your father it is not your wife's job to be your mother if if woman of god if he's talking about oh you know feed me and he's just laying on your chest all day and he can't get up until you affirm him and he's just boohoo well oh if the word's just so sad he might have a mommy issue and man of god if you're if you're if you're significant other your spouse your girlfriend if she wants you if she wants you to call her daughter and she's calling you daddy and she's out here depending on you whining and acting like a baby that's dysfunctional that's the orphan spirit manifesting itself in your romantic relationships let's even go a step further there's you know sexual sin and sexual perversion you know, oftentimes you know um so I was talking with somebody who actually um, had like a, a rejection spirit or, spirit or orphan spirit. What happened was, is that I noticed that like when I was talking with this individual, they would tell me that they would be attracted to certain categories on pornography um, because of the void that they had in their life. And so I don't want to be too graphic, but usually like because it's, it's, it usually stems its love with sexuality, they would watch a certain category in order to, um, to, to appease um, the, the void that they feel like they want. And so it's not natural for you to be in a romantic relationship and expect what you should be getting from your mom or your dad for, for that person to be giving it to you. It's unhealthy, it's unnatural, and the orphan spirit is the one that actually births it. Okay. Another characteristic of the orphan spirit is that they desire to have children so that they can break the cycle. Woo the orphan spirit says, you know what? I can't wait to have kids because when I have kids, we're going to have a full family. Mommy's going to be there. Daddy's going to be there. And I'm going to hug my child. I'm going to tell them how proud I am of them. And so the orphan spirit, what it makes you do is says, you know what? And although that's not bad, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But we have to understand, like, what is your motivation behind it? What is your motivation behind wanting to make sure that you don't continue the cycle? Because you can do that in a healthy way and you can do that in a toxic way. You say, oh, I'm not going to be like my parents. And just make sure it's not coming from a negative place. Yes, you know, it's important to have both people in that. But when you have, make sure that the motive in which you want to make the standard is not to prove a point to your parents, but to actually give the child what it physically needs. Another manifestation of the orphan spirit is that they might have an intense desire to adopt. Now, personally, I want to adopt kids. Like, this is just something I wanted to do. I just, you know, I, I think it's a great act of, of God, you know, to really love another person that has nothing to do with you by choice. Because that's what God did to us. That's why I want to adopt. But the, or the orphan spirit will persuade people to adopt because it wants to be able to rescue them out of their plight. And again, that's not necessarily bad. Just make sure the place it's coming from is good. The orphan spirit, um, another character is, characteristic is that they have an unhealthy independence mindset. Okay. Brace yourself, brace yourself. The orphan spirit, what it does, it persuades men and women to become independent. I don't need a man. I don't need a girl. I don't need anybody to, I make my own money. You know, I can protect myself. I don't need you to protect me. I don't need you to do this. I don't need you to do that. Now, in this day and age where this is such a selfish generation, biblically, that's dysfunctional. That is dysfunctional. Why wouldn't you want protection from somebody that can protect you? But what the orphan spirit said is like, I've never been protected. And so I had to fight all these years to protect myself. When somebody took advantage of me, I had to, I had to fight to, I had to fight in order to, um, to get my rights, um, heard. I had to fight to be seen, fight to get everything that I needed. So that's not necessarily bad. However, you need to make sure like if God, you see, this is the picture about God. God is a loving father. He protects his children. He provides for his children. So why wouldn't you want God to protect and provide for you? But in this independent mindset that we have, I don't need a man. What happens if God gives you a good husband and he says, babe, I'm going to take care of you. You need this done. I'll pay the bills. Somebody, you know, somebody 
buds you in front of the line, he can step in and say, hey, that's not your spot. My girl was here first. My wife was here first. But no, what we wouldn't, all we wanted to say, I'm independent. I don't need nobody to protect me. It's like, no, 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 no. Where is that independence coming from? Is that independent? Is it coming from you knowing your worth as a woman or is it coming from the fact that you've never been protected and you feel like the person that should have protected you wasn't there so you're making sure that you secure your bag? Things that make you go, hmm. Another characteristic of the orphan spirit is that they feel the need also to protect themselves and they also don't like overprotectedness. So if you try to protect them, they actually feel offended because they want to be able to have the liberty to say, I never had nobody and I don't need anybody now. And that's a toxic mentality because as believers, we are called to love each other, to protect each other, to pray for each other. We are actually called to do this. Extreme self-preservation. Absolutely. 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 Say it louder for the people in the back. <laughs> I'm the people in the back. And so this is why you need to know. So Prolific Shard says, what about those people who are, who are sheep in wolf clothing or wolf in sheep's clothing? Well, that's the thing. You have to have the discernment of God. Not everybody who says they are will be who they are. But however, you need to make sure that also the, the orphan spirit doesn't push you into getting love and romance with just anybody. And that's, you have to have the proper discernment. You have to as assess his or her characters or these individuals. Because a lot of people, they see the vulnerability of a need and they take advantage of people's vulnerabilities. A lot of young people, and that's the thing, like when you when people know that you're fatherless or you're motherless, they use, that's how molestation happens. They know that nobody's there to protect you. And so that's why... We need to be sober minded as Christians to understand that it's like, look, we have to be keen and be on the lookout for this orphan spirit because it tries every door of opportunity. And there's people that will say all the right things. They'll do all the right things when really their motive is to harm those who are vulnerable. So I would say to your question that you need to have the proper discernment, okay? Because a lot of people abuse that power. They know that you know that they know that you have no father. So you know you have crazy uncles and you have um just perverted family friends, and you know, and it's just there's a lot of things that go on. And it's very sad. It's very unfortunate. And even men, some men who don't have fathers in their life, you have these uncles who say, I'm going to be like a dad to you. You even have preachers, preachers and people who say, hey, I want to be there for you. I want to love you. You know, I'll be the father figure. And meanwhile, they're, 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 they're doing all types of unimaginable things to these poor, helpless victims. And that's why we need people like us. We need men like us to stand up and say, look, if I'm going to have a child, I'm going to be there to protect my child. I'm going to be there to make sure that nothing happens to them. That's why it's late like you that needs to say that you know what yes this is my child I'm not gonna let just anybody babysit them I'm not gonna let just anybody you know watch my kids I'm not gonna let just anybody do this because there's there's actually sheep and wolves clothing there's actually people who come and masquerade themselves as loving affectionate and, and innocent when really they're ravenous wolves and God I made the judgment of God come upon every person that does not repent father I'm father I'm asking you even now that for every person that was molested, every person that was raped, every person that was taken advantage of sexually as a result of the orphan spirit. Father, won't you let the healing bomb now touch them? And Lord, I'm praying that you'd cause them to forgive their to, to, to forgive their abusers. And Lord, I'm praying that you'd allow them to heal, Lord. Won't you send people in their life to love them and nurture them in the name of Jesus? I felt that one, so forgive me. Another characteristic of the orphan spirit is that they're very defensive. Because that, that's a way of protecting themselves. They feel like they gotta overcompensate. They gotta overprotect themselves. They're very defensive. You say one thing, you know, they really feel like, oh, you know, why, why, why do you care? What's going on, what's going on? That's another manifestation. That's another manifestation. The orphan spirit will cause people to, to, to work hard for affirmation and attention. Now, this is good. This is good. So, the, part, of the, part of the job of the father is to affirm. Fathers affirm. Fathers affirm. So fathers say, I'm so proud of you. You're so beautiful. Now, when I say that, there's some women and even some men, or you're so handsome, that's my son, I'm proud of you, good job. Th these are some of the things that you need when you're growing up. It's called praises, you know? Like, like you know, when you know, like when the baby does something cute, you put the baby in the middle, you clap. Oh, look at the baby. The baby giggles, the baby smiles, the baby's so happy. Why? Because what you're doing is you're building up that child's self-esteem. But what when people have not had the opportunity of having physical parents in their lives and they were they missed out on praises, what the orphan spirit says is, 
post this on Instagram and see what people will say because that's how I'll give you all your praises. If you join the basketball team and you become the MVP, that's how you'll get your praises. And so people with the orphan spirit now, they do things intentionally for affirmation. They think that they want it from people, but what they really want it is from their parents. They All they want to hear is, I'm so proud of you, daughter. I'm so proud of you, son. You're so beautiful. And that's the thing. When you don't tell a child and when you don't really cast your identity upon a child, that child now raises up and it comes up in ways now. And so it has to search for love in all of these wrong places. The orphan spirit will actually cause people to work so hard for the praises of other people. And if not careful, they'll do extreme things and go to extreme measures to make sure that their needs are dealt with. The orphan spirit, it, it makes people work for the praises of man. So how many people, like, you know, a lot of people that like you say, you know what? If you have, like, you know, no, um, no sense of belonging or what? Some men will join the basketball team and they work so hard. They work so hard and they love the sport. They love everything about it. But the reality is they love the praises of the coach. They love the praises of their, of their coaches and people who are training them. Why? Because what happens is it really gives people an opportunity and a chance to be able to receive the praises and the affirmation that they need. Same thing with for women. Women will come on and they'll say, hey, you know what? Like, I just, you know, they'll begin to exploit themselves. They'll begin to wear revealing clothes. And all that they're doing is, is they want the attention from some guy to say that, hey, you're so beautiful. When in reality, if you had, if you had your father or your mother tell you that you're so beautiful, you wouldn't need to work so hard for that. The orphan spirit targets people. And so these are real issues and real realities of life. It shapes the way that we think. It shapes the way that you see things. It distorts your image of love, sex, sexuality, the orphan spirit. Because when, you're, when you've been deprived of natural, healthy love, and you've, been, and you've been thrown into a world of perversion, it now makes that world of perversion a brand new paradigm. All right, you guys are doing well. We're talking, we're talking about some hard stuff. We're talking about some hard stuff. But these are real. These are real. These are real. Now, the orphan spirit, what it does, it clings to others and to other people that makes them feel loved, wanted, and accepted. Now, this is something I've looked and studied a lot of people. And you say, look, you know what? Like, if you notice that certain children, they cling to certain individuals. Sometimes they may not be, you know, their natural parents, but they cling to different individuals. So, you know, if you have a son, sometimes he'll be clinging to, you know, maybe an older cousin. Because maybe the older cousin is saying what needs to be said. Maybe the older cousin is, you know, really um, causing them to feel loved and accepted. Um, some things for girls. Some girls, you know, they cling more towards an older sister or they cling towards more an aunt. Because, again, like... If you don't, if you're not getting your physiological needs met, or rather your emotional needs met, you're naturally, as humans, we're wired to look for things in other places. We're wired to look for things in other places. And so I want to challenge each and every one of us on this live to say, don't allow, don't allow your children or anybody that comes around you to have to search for love and acceptance in other places. And now you see, there's, there's many people now like you know, and people who are anointed to love orphans. And so like, I love like, you know, people who've been abandoned and people who've been rejected. Like, I, I have an anointing to cater, to minister, to love, to pour out because like, somebody has to be able to do it. There is an anointing to adopt. There's an anointing to adopt somebody as, as if it's your own, but do not, do have to make sure. Like I've looked at some kids and you know, and then people say, why are you always um, running behind this person? Why are you always running behind this person? I'm your mom, I'm your dad. You love them more than you love me. It's not necessarily that. There's something that the other individual is giving that child or giving that person that they're getting that they're not getting from home. And that's, that may not be necessarily be a bad thing. Now, the child might think that, oh, you know, I, I want to live with them. And that's things that, you know, kids would say when they're young. They don't really mean it because they don't have the full understanding. But they're just so hung up on what they're getting and what they're receiving that they say that they want to have this all the time. You see, when I was, um, there was this young man, it was baby boy at the time, um, you know, he would always go and stay at a god mom. And we're wondering, like, why is he always... He's never with the mom that you oh he's yeah he's with his aunt he's with his aunt but I had to realize later on meeting that little baby boy is that he loved attention and he loved affection and so the people in his immediate circle they were a little rough you know like they didn't talk to him nicely they didn't praise him you're so smart you're so handsome wow and I want to make this very clear Stephen why are you talking about babies because as humans you don't just overcome it you just look for it in different ways okay that was good. You don't overcome issues like this. You just look for it in different ways. And so you can be 32 and 
might still be a seven year old emotionally because if nobody told you that you're proud of you, now here you are a whole 32 year old man who's upset because you did, because your boss at work didn't tell you good job for completing that project. Here you are now a, a 17 year old girl, you're upset now because um, you know somebody else was picked for that role that you weren't picked for. And so the orphan spirit, like it, these issues, your emotional needs don't go away. And so you, you'll be 40 years old and you'll feel like you're six. You know, you, you, you'll be like 90 and you feel like you're six. It doesn't go away. So Stephen, how do I appease it? God will send people in your life to affirm you and to love you. These issues, you just don't sweep it under the rug. You have to deal with them head on. That's why I'm talking so much about children. Because even now, as I'm talking, I'm sure that you're, I'm seeing people in living rooms. I'm seeing people in, 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 um, in, in bedrooms. And I'm seeing six and seven year old people who've been deprived of platonic love. You've been deprived of it. And it's, it's really actually heartbreaking. I'm actually crying, trying my best to hold it together. Because like the enemy knew that through that void of what you didn't get, he can now control and manipulate your life. But tonight we're going to expose him. All right. How do men usually, um, men usually manifest the, the orphan spirit through sleeping around? While partying. They always desire a sense of belonging. So man them, you know, they, you, you think man, you think man just want to join, um, join a gang for fun? If your parents abandon you and reject you and you turn to the streets, you're, you have some loyal bros when you get there. They are loyal. They're going to love you. They're going to protect you. Yo, you need money? I got you. You need a place to stay? I got you. These are the reasons. Like these, It's the orphan spirit that really causes people to say like, yo, my family's on one, but you guys are my family. And they cling to wherever they're accepted. And that's why I want to make sure, and I even prophesied tonight, that each and every one of you, you will become a safe place for those who've been orphans. You'll be a safe place for those who want love. You'll be a safe place for those who need love and affection in a healthy way. Because we need to break the cycle. Men also manifest the characteristics by idolatry of other male figures in their lives. Men will, they'll idolize, you know, basketball players, you know, they'll idolize, you know, coaches, they'll idolize pastors and leaders, people that they think are father figures because if their natural one wasn't there, then that same thing with women. They'll, they'll really cling towards certain women who are motherly to them and who really cater to the emotional parts of themselves. Characteristics of women who, who are, who are, who are um, overtaken by the orphan spirit, they usually idolize marriage. So they say, I just can't wait to get married. You know, they just slap the tape, like the meme that I posted, they slap it on and they say, this is going to fix my problems, when in reality, it's really not going to fix your problems. Ladies manifest the orphan heart by craving an unhealthy amount of attention from men. An unhealthy amount. If so, if your father, you know, wasn't there for you, what you do now is you work for the affirmation of the boys. So you put up a picture on Instagram. If 10 men don't comment, you pull it down and you try again tomorrow when, it, when you feel the alg algorithms are better. Women oftentimes work for the praise and affirmation of men. If, you, if, 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 if I'm being honest and if you're being honest, most women don't want to wear half of the revealing stuff that they wear. But what they wear brings them attention. Stephen, that's not true. I wear my clothes for me. You don't wear your clothes for you because when you're in the house, you're not wearing revealing clothing. When you're in your house, you're wearing a, you're wearing a sweater, you're wearing track pants, and you have a head tie on. So if you were really dressing for yourself, you'd keep that same energy and go to the grocery store. You'd keep that same energy and go to the schools. But we're not doing that, so I don't want to hear that excuse. The, re the orphan spirit causes women to, to desire an unhealthy amount of attention from men. If he could just notice me, if he could just call me beautiful, if I can work hard, he might be able to validate me. Why? Because the job of your father is to affirm. The job of your father is to give you identity. The job of your father is to say you are beautiful. You are my daughter. I'm here for you. I'm going to protect you. I love you. I will let nothing take care. I will let nothing happen to you. That's the job of a father. But when you've been abandoned by that, you now you take those same expectations and you bring them into your romantic relationship. And now you expect your husband and you expect those men on Instagram and all those people that whose attention you're craving to make sure that your needs are met. Women also manifest um, the orphan spirit. Um, they cling to women who are very motherly, who fill the mother void. Now, this is not this is not this is not a pro this is not wrong. This is actually good. There are some women that are positioned to love you. There are some women that are positioned to make sure that God has a way. He supplies all your needs. The Lord knows what you have need of even before you ask. But I'm just telling you some tendencies so that you can be aware of it. If you find that you love, you know, other people's moms. Um, you know, very differently, or you love certain things about them, that could be a manifestation of a manifestation of the orphan spirit manifesting itself in you. I'm trying to rush because I don't want to be here past 10 o'clock. 
The orphan spirit manifests itself in girls through ungodly submission. So women will do anything for validation from men. That's another way. And lastly, prostitution. I believe that's kind of honest. Okay, Stephen, that's phenomenal. You gave us all these tips. You gave us all these things. What does this have to do with me? Now, the orphan spirit, this is how it manifests itself in the natural. But it translates itself over into the spiritual. So those who have an orphan spirit, they have a hard time relating to God. Because you see, when you don't have a natural example of a father, we tend to think that God, our Heavenly Father, is the same way as our natural father. So if he's absent, you don't even know how to think about God because you've never really even seen the Father. And if you do have a father in your life, you think that your father is exactly, you think that God is just like your natural father when he's not. He says what? God is not like man. People with the orphan spirit, they, they have a hard time receiving the love of God. They have a hard time receiving that they're sons and daughters of the Most High. They struggle with um, understanding that they're forgiven. Because all they know is that like they struggle to know that even in sin, they, the Lord says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always. The orphan spirit will feel lonely like God is not there with them because usually their natural parents or their father or their mother wasn't there for them. And so now they, they find it hard to believe that God will never forsake them. They have a hard time believing that God says that they're beautiful. They have a hard time seeing that God says that they're fearfully and wonderfully made. They have a hard time receiving affection. Kayla, Abba's heart. That's exactly what we did in February 2019. We did an event called Abba's heart. And it talked about the orphan spirit. Are you a vagabond? No. Are you an orphan? No. What are you? I'm a daughter and I'm a son. Those with the orphan spirit, they struggle. And it opens the door to lust and all kinds of different perversions. Okay? So I just, that's how it translates. And so you need to understand tonight that you are loved of God. God is your father. God is not like man. And that's the thing. The orphan spirit also, it also, um, it runs away from rebuke and correction. It takes it as an attack. And that's the thing. Fathers, according to Hebrews 12, says that there is their job to correct you. And they correct you in love. So when an orphan is corrected, they run from it because they're not used to correction. They're not used to someone telling them about themselves so that they can become better. They respond incorrectly to, to um, correction. So people in the scriptures who have the orphan spirit. Cain, the prodigal son, he was a willful orphan. He removed himself from his father's house. And said, I want to live on my own. I want to go out there. And he went through wild partying, trying to fill voids. And he's like, wait, I have a loving father. Why am I out here eating um, stuff with the swine when my father can take care of me? Esau was made an orphan when he had to run away. Jesus on the cross, father, father, why have you forsaken me? Jesus felt abandoned. That was an orphan spirit that tried to take him up. But he had to remember in that time that God was with him always. And lastly, everybody knows Mephibosheth. In the Bible, in 2 Samuel, it talks about that. Okay, so, Stephen, how do we cast out the orphan spirit? You need to embrace your sonship in Christ. Please leave this live up. My phone won't let me watch it. I'll leave it up. You, you can find it on YouTube. How do we cast out the orphan spirit? You need to embrace your sonship in Jesus Christ. Type this in the comments. I am a daughter, or if you're a man, I am a son. You need to embrace it. Understand that you being an orphan, or you being um, in tip, um, inflicted by the orphan spirit, it's not your fault. Oh, it's not your fault. There's nothing you could have done. You were a baby. You were small. You didn't ask to be here. It's not your fault. Let you may the liberation and the freedom of Christ even now. I bind all self condemnation in the name of Jesus. It is not your fault. You couldn't have avoided it. This had nothing to do with you. You are a son of the Most High God, and you are a daughter of the Most High God. Be free from that lie. Be free from it in Jesus' name. How do you cast it out? You have to understand and renounce. You have to renounce it. Say, I am not an orphan. My father loves me. I'm loved of God. You make bold decrees. Don't let the enemy beat you up and tell you that you're not loved and that you don't have a place. You say, I'm God's son. My father is proud of me. Oh yes, God, when everybody else turns their back on me, you will never leave me nor forsake me. You have to declare the word of yourself. Be consistent because this demon, it, maybe it's been with you all your life. So if you renounce it once, it's not just going to run away. You need to make sure that you're constantly fighting. I feel the Holy Ghost. You need to be consistent. Now, you also, you need to learn how to love platonically. Learn how to love your friends. Learn how to love your brothers, your sisters, and your mothers. Don't over-sexualize everything. Just because somebody hugs you doesn't mean they want to sleep with you. Just because someone thinks you're beautiful doesn't mean they want to sleep with you. Just because someone kisses you doesn't mean they want to sleep with you. There is a healthy way of doing love and affection, so you need to rid that demon of its power.
Oh my God. Now, if you're taking notes, I want to give you some notes for study for everybody who feels like the Spirit has tried to inflict them. Romans 8 from verse um, 15 to 23, it talks about the Spirit of adoption. Romans 8 from 15 to 23. Also, Galatians 4 from verse 1 to 5. Galatians 4, 1 to 5. Psalms 103, verse 8 to 13. It talks about as a, as a father pities his child. I hope you're taking notes. If not, catch them on the replay. Another scripture is Hebrews 12 from verse 5 to 11. Hebrews 12 from 5 to 11. I'm going to pray with you before we end. Also, Psalms 27 verse 10. That's when David says that when mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. John 14 verse 18 where Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. The disciples felt abandoned when Jesus told them that he was going to go. The word comfortless is it, it, it's, it's translated to say, I will not leave you um, parentless. So the, the Holy Ghost is a covering, fathering, parenting spirit. Woo! Lastly, Psalm 68 verse 5. That's where David says that he's a father to the fatherless. Now, let's pray together. I want to pray for everybody who's been inflicted, who's been tormented, who's been tormented. If I said anything that identified with you, put in the comments and say, I did. And I will pray for you personally. Let's touch and agree. Father God, I thank you now for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the spirit of grace. Thank you, Lord God, that you would not leave us comfortless, but that you would come to us. Lord, I thank you, God, for your daughter and the children and your sons that you've mantled tonight. Father, I'm praying that you would allow them to understand that it's not their fault. Father, I break self-condemnation and shame off of them. And Lord, I decree the, the I decree their identity to be firm in you, Lord. Let them understand, as according to your scripture, that they are your sons. They are your daughters. Father, I bind even now all spirits of perversion that try to enter them, that try to make them go into looking for love in the wrong places. Father, I'm praying that you would allow your healing oil to flow, Lord God, right where they are. Father, won't you allow the spirit of grace to rest upon them. Lord, I, I bind the lives of the enemy, and Lord, I release the compassion of Jesus. Lord, even now let the physical, tangible presence of God fill them in the room. Let them feel you. Oh, Lord, let them know that you are near. Comforter, we call upon you. Holy Ghost, you are the comforter, we call upon you. I'm asking God that you would fill us, oh God, and send us people that are pure and innocent to love us the way that we always needed to be loved. And Lord, when they show up, I bind the spirit of pride. Let our pride not kick them out. Let our pride not keep them away but let us lovingly cling to them to get what we need not in an unhealthy way but because healing is a children's bread father i'm asking you now in the name of jesus that you will allow all envy and jealousy to be eradicated i pray that when they see people with fathers and mothers that jealousy will not grip them but instead they would know that their time is coming lord help us and teach us how to be good parents teach us lord god how to move forward into being good um people to our children lord i'm asking you now that you let the oil of glory we rest upon you and thank you that you redeemed us thank you that we are not orphans thank you for the spirit of adoption thank you god that you are not like man thank you that you are compassionate as psalms 103 says you are a god you are a father you pity us the way how a father will pity his child thank you god for your correction help us oh god help us to renounce help us to decree and help us to be bold oh god against these demons and their powers we thank you we praise you we glorify you in the high and hallowed name we pray Amen and amen. People of God, be free. You are a son of God. You have access. When God is delighted in hearing you, when you sin, he, he has compassion. Read Psalm 103. He pities you. He removes your sin as far as the east is from the west. God is not like man. So although your father may have been petty, God is not going to be petty. Although your mom may have been petty, God is not going to be petty. God is not like man. All right, listen, I'm so happy. If you want to catch this replay, we're going to make it available for you on YouTube. I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And I'm so excited to hear and to see your journeys blossom as you go forth in this life. I love you. I love you. I love you. And we'll talk soon. Take care. Cling